Here's what we have today. For a friend that says, look, I've got some weed ears that I want to hang on this back wall. Can you help me? So we're going to focus on this wall. As you can see, it already has exposed studs. So here we go. Eugene Segovia with Easy Stud Rack. Today we are going to try to organize this back wall. Now when it comes to the Easy Stud Rack storage system, people are asking what comes with it, uh, how much storage does it do? I just say a $20 package of Easy Stud Racks comes with eight of these guys. You just put between studs or any boards and it's got little spots you put shelves in and adjust them as you need them. Each one of these I would say is one foot. They're actually 12 and 11 16 inches, something like that, but who needs the details, right? If you stack them, it will make four feet, three inches of storage. So four feet, three inches of storage. Got that? Give me a thumbs up if you do. Down in the like section, see how I throw that in? An easy stud rack easily attaches to a stud. And you put four screws. Now these screws are one inch long. The reason I'm telling you all this because I've been doing a lot of videos on craft room storage and building storage boxes for your ink pads. And some of those use a one by four, but right now we'll focus on a two by four. These are designed to go in a two by four. That screw does not stick out on the outside. I always have it facing in the same direction. So if you accidentally put yours upside down, then I guess you just need to finish it off upside down. But I recommend letters facing up. That way, when you put it on the other side, the screws don't hit each other. I'll give you an example of that. So here the letters are facing up. You see white in the background. Now I'm just gonna flip it. When you flip it, the holes, you notice they're, 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 they're see-through now. You can see them because your screw's gonna go in the same spot. They're gonna hit each other and then you're gonna be cussing me out. But then I'm gonna have to say, I told you, I have a video showing you that. Screws are only for a two by four. This is a one by four. If you use these same screws in here, they're going to stick out. But you're gonna be poking Ow. your finger and then you're gonna be cussing me. So you see how it sticks out? Just a little bit, just enough to poke your, leave a mark if you run your hand across there. One by fours, you'll have to go buy shorter screws. Okay, now let's discuss wood sizes. Whenever you use a one by four in an easy stud rack, it is exactly the width of the easy stud rack. You're not just limited to a one by four. You can do a one by six, one by eight. If you use this big board, it's gonna stick out. So you can put big shelves on there. Now, if this board was say 10 feet long, and as you put it on there, yes, it's gonna probably not withstand that weight because it's such a long board. Not the board, but whatever you put on it. If you need to know what items I'm using, where did I get this or where did I get that, just go down to the description. I'll have a list there of all the items that I'm using. Let's just get started with the clean canvas. Here we go. Next step is I'm gonna cut out all that white. That used to be like a house wrap. I use this knife. There'll be a link in the description. So if you wanna ask what I used, go to the link in the description. In case you're wondering, this is just vines I'm pulling off, not cable or wire. You know, when you're working on projects like this, having to look up and cut things, always wear safety glasses. That way you don't get anything in your eye. These chickens are just all coming around here. This is the closest I've gotten to any chicks since the coronavirus. How long these guys are. Those are three feet. This tape measure, I got a video. You want to click on this link? And that side. No, it's this side. You'll see a link in the description if you want to check it out. What's up, chicken? You coming to help? Checking me out? I'm talking to a chicken. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Today's tip, if you're taking screws and nails out and they fall on the floor, try to pick them up because you know what could happen? You could step on them and... Now we got a nice clean canvas to work with. I had to close some doors and put some coverings over these doors because the light was coming in. So it's really hot in here. I guess I have a tendency to pick projects in the middle of summer. Talk to a friend and we started off this conversation with, I need a place to hang my weed eaters. My weed eaters, my blower, stuff like that. But I want it near this little workbench that he's got right here close by. These were already here. There are electrical lines running here. So we'll just go ahead and take advantage of this guy. I'm just using some deck screws. I'm just using a DeWalt, DeWalt drill. This is a 20 volt, I really like a 20 volt. It's an impact driver. 
And then just for the grins of it, I'm coming in and using a level. These two by fours were already here. So I'm just gonna slap another one by four right here in front and then come in here to store this guy. Now when it comes to getting things level, it's always a good idea to kind of start your, your screw as you get your board to level how you want it, then you don't have to worry about trying to get that screw to. All right, now we got that cut. These are just wood screws, about an inch and a half long. We're not building a space shuttle here. We're just, oops. Sometimes you really have to be careful how you're screwing a screw in. You might have to pre-drill a hole to prevent this. But if you notice, as soon as it went in there, it started cracking. Same with this side, probably screw it right there. But I would go ahead and pre-drill a hole, and that way that'll prevent that from happening. Let's get some nails. See if I can find some nails around here. Yeah, something like this. If I don't have anything to pre-drill a hole, I'll just use some 4D nails, about an inch and a half long. Take a couple of these nails. Notice I'm talking with an accent now. Kind of stick them in your mouth like this. Not too deep, because you could choke on them. Oh. That's a warning. Just cause I'm doing it doesn't mean it's right. Be careful, these are choking hazards, you could choke. I'm only gonna use four nails, so I'll put three like this. Use the other one. And then as I use them, I'll just pull them out of my mouth. Don't ever try to nail into that thing. That's a knot in a tree, kind of where a limb grows out. And that is a pain in the butt to nail to. It's really hard. This one really had no issues anywhere. I took that one screw out, put a nail in. And this is just a support for that guy. Let's go in here and put this guy. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this guy will come around and then we'll use something. Something, something to hold that in place. Maybe a bungee? I don't want to drill a hole in this without asking for permission. This is what I call zip ties because they kind of sound like a zipper when you zip them. They call them cable ties here, but I'll have a link of what I'm using. These are two different links. There's a nail right here. It just happened to already be there, but just think if you put a nail, a screw, something, whatever you want, something with a head on it. I'm just going to come in here like this and tie it enough to where it won't pop off the head. Loop this guy through. This guy's gonna come up. Let's see if I can just get it to stay like that. Look at that. And when you're ready to use it, you just pop it off, use it, and when you're done, just slide it over like that. I am a genius. And this blower, I notice, has a charger. Why not have the charger close to the blower? You gotta find a plug. There's a plug right here. So somehow I hang it here and then have a shelf for the charger and we'll be golden. Golden, I'm telling you. So as I'm looking at this guy, I notice on the back, it has like a little spot where you can put a nail. I'm gonna go ahead and set it right here, kinda a little high up, and then I'm gonna put easy stud racks right here. There's enough cord on this charger, and it's gonna sit right here. Or it could sit here. It doesn't matter, because with the easy stud rack shelving system, you can move it anywhere. Ooh. Screw I'm using for this is, oh, I can't even see this, I'm blind. Uh, six by two, it's a deck screw. I'm, I'm drilling it at an angle down. Look at that. Oh. Stay focused on what your task is. Write down what your goal is. Weed eaters, they want weed eaters up, weed eaters, garden the tools, the power tool ones. So I gotta focus on that. Stay focused, stay focused. Got this guy, it's got like a little flat thingy right there. I could hang it on a hook like this, or I can nail a two by four across here and let it sit on that flat thingy. Is I'm gonna put a two by four right here. I'm gonna screw a little hook like this. I can put this one like this, and I need the hook to be right around here. So the middle of my two by four needs to be right there. These are self-drilling screws. These are great. Remember that earlier how that wood split? This screw would prevent that. So the easiest thing to do is set this on the floor, 
and go ahead and pre kind of screw them in not all the way through but just just to get it started now you're probably wondering well how do you know where it needs to go well all i know is i have a two by four that i'm going to screw into so if you want an exact measurement then you would do three quarters of an inch from the end of the board we'll put you right in the middle of this guy there we go just get it started we'll do the same thing over here i'm flipping the board around and do the same thing Ow. My line that I marked is right here. And I said that'll be the middle of my two by four. And I'm just gonna screw the top screw in. Good way on a level to know which way it's gotta go is you just lift up one end and the other. Say this thing is crooked like that. That's obvious which way it's gotta go up, right? No. But if, you, if it's just slightly not level, then you sometimes don't know which way it needs to go. So this side could go up or this side. So I just kind of lift. As I lift, I know Okay, this side's gotta go up. We're gonna put it like this. I'm, I'm looking down because there's an outlet out there that I gotta make sure it's easy to get in and out. And I just kinda just mark it a little bit. Make sure you mark it with a pencil. Now I did a video on garden tool storage and I use these. You can click on this link and uh, watch that video on how to organize garden tools and with the numbering system. That way whenever somebody borrows something, they always put it back. If you're using two or three of these items, you're not gonna know where to put it. It's got a number. You will. Come on. I'm... What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to drill a pilot hole just to make it screw in a lot easier. I, I have a kit that I bought here, a DeWalt kit that looks really works really well. Well, I always write what it is. Drill bits, one sixteenth to half an inch. I wrote on here which way to flip this little guy to open it. I always either leave it open and then you take it out and it opens up. And if there's loose items in there, they'll fall out. But now, with that little arrow, it's easy to tell. We're gonna try a 16th. It's really a small hole. Again, drill in and pull out and get all the little shavings out. Don't push too hard on that 16th because it could break. Let's see if we can screw it in. 16th works, plus it's easier to remember. I need to move this guy over about right here and then it sits everything sits perfect now I only use one two by four I need to use this guy Let's take it off use it Ooh. put it back <gasps> I think I'm gonna move it over just a little bit ah whenever you screw these out they get hot just from friction much better. That sits in there much better. This guy is a, I guess a pruning chainsaw type thingamajig. You can't see up there, but I know you can see a little bit, but I've got rafters. I think that's what they're called. It's got this little handle right here and it's got this little stub that's sticking out. But what I'm gonna do when I screw this hook in, normally you would screw it and it sits flat like that, but I'm gonna intentionally screw it to where it sits like that. So that way, when you put it on there, it'll hold it in place. <laughs> All right, so we come in here. Oh yeah. I mean, it looks awkward, but it works out great. It just keeps going up, up, up. It's just right above the ground. It's turning out good. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. I actually needed a break, so I cracked open it cold one. As I'm sitting here drinking like this, I look up and guess what I find. I know I said earlier I'm just going to leave this guy all together because I don't see any more attachments, but I found one. The beauty about these guys, look, they come with hooks. See? Hook. So I'm going to put it right there and I'll use these little two inch ones. If you have nails, use nails. Whenever I screw it, I come slightly at an angle down and when you put it on it, it just falls in place. You know what? I'm gonna take advantage of this area right here and the hook, and that's where I'm gonna put it. Look at that, perfect spot. If I need to hang something else, that's what I'm gonna do. As of right now, that's where it's going. I wanna hang this guy, and I'm just gonna use a hook. I'm gonna screw it in right here, like this. It's one in this shape. We'll call it a square hook, and I'm coming in underneath. But right there, we'll put it in the center of the, ooh. How am I gonna turn it? I won't be able to turn it and screw it on. 
what would you do? Remember how I said if I need the room? If I need, if I need to, hang to hang something else, else that's what, else, I'm, gonna that's what I'm gonna do. Now's the perfect time to move it over. I'll put it right here like this. I could go up with it. That's what I wanna do. So, here we go. Now, if it's a little tight, another tip when screwing that thing in is you can get a screwdriver, preferably a longer one than a short one, and use it for a little bit of leverage. Oh, beautiful. I know, I know, I know, nitpicky. If I was to put a level on here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little screw right here so it stays level. That's all the lawn equipment. Now we had all that stuff, oil and stuff like that that was stored in those big wide shelves. Now we gotta find a home for those. And I got some ideas. Ooh. Now obviously, if you've stuck around this long for this video, hey, why don't you give me one of those likes? Time to use the easy stud racks. In one package, you get four feet of storage. Well, always, if you wanna watch an installation video, you can click on this link over here and go through a quick little five minute install on exposed studs. But for right now, I'll kinda go through it real quick. I'm gonna store oil behind here. Anything that's associated with this equipment is gonna get stored behind it. And then before I do this other one, I actually have to cut a piece of wood. Text are always facing up. Here to here is four foot. <laughs> four foot. <laughs> uh, 14 and an eighth will make it tight. 14 and an eighth will be tight, so I'm gonna go about a 14 inches and 14 and a 16th. I cut it at 14 and a 16th of an inch. Text up. I'll slide that guy in there. That guy in here. And then, like I show in the installation video, I just move it up and down like this with my thumb to get it to sit level. Oh, dang, I'm good. That was perfect. Can I just poke it in there to where the screw stays? It doesn't stay. So I'm using a one of those magnetic ends to hold the screw. There we go. And when I do the bottom, I kind of put the screw in the bottom of the hole. Let me show you, let me show you. Okay, so I'll get this guy, I'm gonna push it in like that. And then this hole right here, I always tell you to aim for the center of the hole. But when, it's, when, you're, when you've already got one on top, I say aim for the bottom, oh, let's see. Bottom of the hole, like right there. All right, continue on, continue on, continue on. All right, you got one shelf. We know we got chainsaw and this tool that's used for the chainsaw. Always measure and cut your shelf as you're going. It measures 14 and an eighth, so it looks like it's getting wider. And I'm sure there's more oil around. We can go all the way to here, fill it up with oil. I'm a big fan of trying to keep everything off, off the ground. I'm just gonna nail this board like this, store your gas can. In fact, I can come out with it a little bit like that. There you go. I still don't like this guy sitting at an angle like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little screw right there just to let it sit straight. Just, that's just me, that's just me. There you go. Now I feel better. So now we've taken care of this area over here, used one package, eat, one package, one, Excuse me. Used one pair of four pair. We used two easy stud racks. You get eight in a package, a $20 package. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the rest of them right here. And then I'll go ahead and put another package right here for future stuff. So what I'm gonna do is some of these old shelves that were there originally, I'm gonna cut those to seven inch by whatever this width is. Actually, this board was, I think 12 inches, seven and four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 and a quarter inches. So I just cut it to width and then trimmed a piece off. Now I've got a deeper shelf. Look at that. Now I can come in here and put this guy, charger. So as you can see, this shelf sticks out past an extra three, almost three and a half inches. I always recommend 
the deeper the shelf, the lower down you put it. That way it's kind of a step. You can kind of step back and just see. You know, above it, then you can start seeing other items. So this here, I did a check. I made sure that we can pull the charger or the battery in and out. I get asked quite a few questions about, do I have to stack them end to end? Can I cut them? The answer is yes, you can cut them. Just be careful if you're gonna use a saw. I, I, there's a video where I show how you can actually purchase a pair of utility scissors and it cuts right through it. I always say aim for the bottom of the hole, but when you're going up and you're stacking it like this, aim for the middle of the hole, that way it doesn't shift up or down. On the opposite hole on the top, that's the one you aim for the top, that way it kind of stretches it. Chickens, just come up to me and talk to me. You coming to help? Huh? I think this chick likes me. Package number two. Again, you get eight easy stud racks and screws that you attach to a two by four. No wood, no woods included, just the shelves for $20. I know what you're thinking. Why, why are you gonna put shelves up so high? The shelves up high where you require a ladder is for items that you're, you hardly use, but you still need to have. You can just see it, get your ladder, get it, use it, put it back, that's it. You notice this board that goes across here might pose a problem, so I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And all I'm doing is I'm gonna go in here and mark just a little bit past where that wood goes. And I'm just gonna set it on top of it and mark a little bit past where the wood is and just notch that out. Now you're probably wondering, how are you gonna notch that out? Well, let me show you. You could do the El Cheapo way and use one of these, or you can invest in one of these guys, one of these little guys, but get this guy. It's a lot safer, easier. Now look, when you turn this guy on, it's got different speeds on it. We'll go up to, say, six. And all these little guys right here, I would just get a little knife and just kind of clean it up. Look at that. Mm. Perfect. And we go with the other one, we're just gonna do the opposite. Got it? I know there are gas cans that are gonna be stored on the ground here. So I'm just gonna leave this bottom one open. You can always add them later if you feel like you need to store something down there. What do we have? We've used two packages. One pair there, say it's $5 for a pair. Another pair right here, that's $10. And then you got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 12 easy stud racks here. So 12, 14, 16. Two packages. 76, almost 77 inches of storage. Ooh. People ask the question, how much weight can this thing hold? I'm gonna give you an example. I weigh about 160. I am just holding myself up and it holds my weight. Now I limit it to 45 pounds. What are you gonna store? You're not gonna store a body up there or weights. I mean, what are you gonna store that's over 45 pounds? Comment down if you store something that's heavier than that. I'm just curious. Now again, this is the fun part right here. So they probably use it pretty often. So I would store that like right there. Ooh, it looks like it needs to be dusted. The shelves aren't wide enough. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut a shelf. So I'm just, I set it in place, I measure it. I need an eight inch shelf. It just so happened that I had this board. It's a 11 and a quarter inches long. So it's a one by 12. One warning, this is a deep shelf. What I call a deep shelf. The further you go out, the less weight you can put on the end.
This is a one by 12, which is 11 and a quarter inches deep. Easily store like that. In fact, I would even cut this shelf off so you don't try to put anything bigger in there. If you need the space, you could store it like this. Still gonna hold, not a problem with the easy stud rack. There is a warning though. Not all boards are the same thickness. So I've increased the space on the easy stud rack. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This space here, between here and the slot is designed for a three quarter inch piece of plywood or any one by four, which is actually three quarter inch thick. Wood, you have tolerances in wood. Some are thicker than others. If it's moist outside, the wood's gonna expand, so it's gonna fit a little tighter. If you notice, it's, there is some slop here. I always use like uh, popsicle sticks. You can stick it in there if you want it to not wiggle. The longer the board, I would recommend using a piece of plywood three-quarter inch plywood. That way, when you put this pressure, the grains of the wood are always running this way. If you ever notice when somebody chops a, karate chops a piece of wood, they always chop it with the grain, not against the grain. You know why? Because they'll break their hand. So anyway, just, just kind of stuff that you probably didn't know, probably never want to know, but, <laughs> but this wood would do the same exact thing if you were to stand on this end, it'll just break right off. Whatever you're storing, if it's lighter items, like this right here is pretty light. It's just a drill set, but it doesn't go all the way back because it's just a little too wide and it won't fit. I mean, I, I've got another two and a half inches it could go back. We're gonna store it like this. And I'm gonna cut it at three and a half inches. So that'll make another shelf. I decided to go ahead and finish this up. 